So now in this next flowchart, we'll entitle uh, our next idea as the continuation of looking at nutritional needs. And this will be part two. So nutritional needs two. And if you remember, there are three nutritional needs. We covered the first two, chemical energy and organic building blocks, in our first flowchart. Now we'll conclude the third and final nutritional need. Again, the reason why we need to eat is because it provides us nutrition. Two of the things that nutrition gives us are energy and chemical building blocks. The third and final thing that nutrition gives us, consuming things as heterotrophs, are what are known as essential nutrients. So number three will be essential that's a good term to remember in nutrition. We'll reiterate in just a second. Essential nutrients are consumed and thus gained via nutrition. Essential nutrients are those that can't be made by the body. Keyword here is can't be made by the body. Therefore, the only way to make things that are essential or in order to have essential nutrients that are still necessary for the body's success or to consume them. Therefore, we can state as a continuation, these things must be ingested and then further digested and absorbed later on. So these are things that we have to consume as a part of our diet in the right amount and in the correct type. Let's take a little bit of a deeper look at what constitutes an essential nutrient. First, we'll look at essential amino acids. So these are a group of amino acids that we do not make on our own. Now, amino acids are the building blocks for proteins. And we have many proteins in our body. Proteins are the functional, I would say, structure that really comprises everything that we do. So these structures are really important, and thus these amino acids are really important. In all, in all and all together, what we basically notice is that there are 20 amino acids that are required to make all the proteins necessary for our healthy function. 20 amino acids are required to make all needed proteins, whatever they may be. So if you think of proteins, don't just think of muscle. Think, so, think of things like uh, DNA gyrases or DNA um, polymerases, RNA polymerase. Those are all proteins, enzymes. All of those things are proteins. A lot of proteins are within the body that need to be made successfully. And their successful synthesis requires 20 amino acids. Now, what we notice is that most animals can make about half of these amino acids on their own. Okay, so we'll write that down. Most animals, including humans, can make half on their own. So about 10 can make half on their own. But the only problem that really arises are those amino acids that require two different uh, elements. The amino acids that we need are those that have sulfur and nitrogen in them. Remember, nitrogen was an organic building block that we needed to use or needed to consume as a part of our nutrition. So therefore, we must ingest those amino acids that contain the two critical elements here, which are sulfur and also nitrogen. So we can make anything that doesn't have sulfur, anything that doesn't have nitrogen, and when I say anything, I mean an amino acid without sulfur and without nitrogen, but anything that does, and there's about half of them that need sulfur and nitrogen, those are the ones that we need to get from our diet. So if we look at humans, an interesting thing is that uh, humans actually uh, change their ability in terms of what amino acids they can and cannot make. In adults, let's take a look at the adult form, like you and I, we make, uh, we need to actually consume, I should say, eight essential amino acids. But in infants, they actually need to consume nine. They actually don't have the capability of making one of the amino acids that adults later do gain the ability to. So they need to consume nine essential amino acids. So with development, we can basically state that as infants develop, with development, they can make more, one more. And the one that infants cannot make on their own is histidine, um, but we don't need to know the details of that distinction. Just know that as humans, we change our ability in terms of what we can and cannot make and what we do and do not need to consume from our environment. So adults, eight essential amino acids, eight amino acids that are probably going to contain sulfur or nitrogen. For infants, it's about nine. 
And the one that infants can make is histidine. Now, let's take a look at some protein sources. Where do we get the amino acids then? These are all going to come from different types of protein. So let's take a look. Types of protein sources. Where do we consume proteins and how do we consume them? What do they give us? Protein sources can be broken down into two different types and it's very simple. We either have the consumption of complete proteins or incomplete proteins. So let's take a look at the difference. Complete proteins are those that are basically going to come uh, with, the, we'll state that this is defined as food with all, with all essential amino acids. And remember, it's not just about the type of food that you consume and nutrition, it's about the amount as well. So we're going to state that it's going to be any food with all essential amino acids in a proper ratio, the correct amount. Of amino acids. Maybe we need one amino acid more than the other and that proper ratio will be exemplified by a food, a protein source that is technically considered a complete protein. So what classifies as food with all essential amino acids? Basically eight essential amino acids in adults. This is usually going to be, for example, animal sources. Animal sources, animal food, is basically going to cover this complete protein requirement. Animal sources include things like eggs, cheese, and meat. Those are all animal-derived goods that are going to give us complete proteins. Those things, like the meat that we consume, cheese, or eggs that we consume, will have the eight essential amino acids that our body can't make, and that must be ingested, and thus, that's why we eat it. Now, what about incomplete proteins? Incomplete proteins, they simply lack all of the essential uh, amino acids, or some, I should say. So they lack some essential amino acids. So they may have four, not eight, or five and not eight. So that's the term incomplete. That's why we use that. A good example of this are plants. So a lot of the times what we notice is that vegetarians who do not eat animal-based products, animal-based food, vegetarians, what they need to do in order to make sure they get all of the essential amino acids, all eight of them, is that they will need to make sure that they have a varied consumption of plants. So not so every single plant will not make all of the essential amino acids, but if you mix the amounts of plants that you eat, the different, if you get different types, if you vary them, then you will get the correct amount. So you need a varied consumption. That's what we basically can term that idea in vegetarians. They can't just keep on eating the same plant over and over. They're simply not going to get all of the essential amino acids that they need for proper nutritional need to be satisfied. So that covers our look at essential amino acids. Another essential nutrient that needs to come from the diet that we cannot make. These amino acids, the eight over here, in addition to that are essential fatty acids. So let's take a look at these briefly. Essential, again, that means our body can't make it. We must ingest them. So essential fatty acids. So what do we have here? Here, what we notice is that our body can make about mo can make most of them actually. We can make most of the fatty acids we need. Can make most fatty acids, but we can't make some very specific double bonds. We can't make some with double bonds. So if you remember way back in Bio 1 when we looked at molecular structure and macromolecules, some fatty acid tails have these kinks, these double bonds. And the reason why we can't make those that have the double bonds is because we as a human organism lack the enzyme that is capable of doing this. So what do we have to do? We have to ingest the very special fatty acids that have the specific double bonds that our bodies can't make because we lack the enzyme that does make the double bond necessary for this fatty acid. What are the amino acids, uh, the fatty acids I should say, that qualify? So we have to ingest two specific fatty acids to recognize and take note. One of them, they have very similar names, linoleic fatty acid and also linolenic fatty acid. So linoleic and lino, linolenic acid both are going to be classified as polyunsaturated fatty acids. So an unsaturated fat is one that possesses a double bond. If it's polyunsaturated, it means it possesses 
greater than one double bond. And that's what we'll just remind ourselves. Greater than one dB double bond. That's what a polyunsaturated fat is. And this is what we need to get from our diet, from our nutrition. We need to consume this in the correct amount. And the type of thing that we need to consume is linoleic or and, and linolenic acid. Where do we get this from the food? Food, uh, in terms of food sources, this is usually found in seeds, in some specific grains, and also in some veggies that we consume. These are all going to be basically... Uh, these two uh, fatty acids, it's going to be very hard for you if you live in a you know, non-third world country, if you live in America, let's say. These are so common in the diet that it's not usually deficient in anybody. They're just very, very common, the grains that we put into food, seeds, and the vegetables that we consume. We usually get these all covered. It's these essential amino acids that may be a little bit more difficult for people who are vegetarians to get covered, thus they need the varied consumption. So that covers our look at nutritional needs. You might be wondering, well, we have amino acids here, we have fatty acids, kind of like lipids here. What about the carbs? Well, carbs are not essential to us. Believe it or not, we can actually make carbs on our own through a process called gluconeogenesis, making new glucose. But that's not necessary to understand for right now. If you take biochem, you'll learn all about gluconeogenesis. Just know that carbs do not classify as essential nutrients, only amino acids and fatty acids. What we'll do in the next flowchart is continue our look at nutritional needs. There are now going to be some of the other things that are necessary in order for us that are not classified as nutrients in order for us to succeed with our nutrition.